Welcome to Beer Stories from Beer Story Brew House. Um, this is a guide on how to make the best fermentation of your beer. Please click like and subscribe down here. You'll make me very, very happy and you'll get the newest videos directly in your YouTube feed. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. So, a good fermentation is really critical for making a good beer. Uh, we're just making the wort um, and the beer is actually making the beer. So, if you want a great beer, you have to give the, the yeast the best environment to create a great beer. Um, and there are three steps in doing this. The first step is to find out if you need any nutrition uh, for your yeast and also uh, oxygen in your wort. It, this is especially uh, important for higher gravity beers. If I do a beer that's over 1065, just about, or 1070, um, I add yeast nutrition. Um, I don't oxygenate my beer. Uh, well, I, I splash my wort directly down into my uh, fermentation tank. But that's it. I don't use uh, oxygen um, otherwise. And I have never had a stock fermentation. Um, yeah, so, so oxygen is not that necessary on our scale. Nutrition, they can be necessary for high OG beers. But how you pitch your yeast um, and the pitching rate is really, really important. Um, and also temperature control after pitching the yeast is very important as well. Um, and of course you have to uh, pitch, you have to use a uh, healthy yeast. Uh, so it's important how you store it always in the, in the fridge. Um, and if it's a liquid yeast, uh, you have to use a fresh one. Um, yeah, or make a starter. Well, I'll get back to that. Yeast produces alcohol and CO2, but it also produces uh, phenols, it also produces uh, esters, um, it also produces a lot of other compounds like diacetyl, uh, acetyl, acetaldehyde, <laughs> uh, fusel alcohols, uh, and so forth. And those are really not desired in our beers, most of the time anyway. Um, but Luckily for us, the yeast, if, it's, uh, if you take care of your yeast, it will actually clean up the beer in the end. I'll get back to that as well. So, if you really want to uh, take care of your yeast, you have to pitch the right amount. And you can use a program like Brewfather or, or other programs like that uh, to make sure that you have enough yeast for your beer. That's depending on the on the original gravity, um, and then of course, if you have a high uh, original gravity beer, you should also be concerned about nutrition uh, and maybe oxygen, but but probably not. Um, yeah, so there are three phases um, when fermentation. You have the adaption phase and the lag phase. Uh, that's the same phase. And most people call it lag phase. And that's the first uh, 6 to 24 hours. Um, this is where the yeast uh, kind of wakes up. It, uh, it tries to get ready for battle. <laughs> it tries to get ready to uh, ferment all the sugar. Um, and here it uses up, up all the oxygen in the wort. Um, and it requires uh, some nutrition and stuff like that to just prepare the cell membrane and everything um, so that in the high growth phase it can actually uh, let sugar pass through the cell walls. Um, yeah, and, and that is just ready to, uh, to met metabolize all the sugar and produce alcohol and CO2. So that's the first 6 to 24 hours. Um, and the temperature here is very important. I'll get back to that. And then you have the high growth phase or high Krausen phase. And that's about one to six days. And this is where the magic happens, you can say. This is where 
it actually is dividing uh, the cells and uh, there's a growth in cell count. This is where you produce all the alcohol, most of the CO2, but also most of the esters and the phenols and the, all the off flavors as well. And so it's important to, yeah, and, and if you have a too high of a temperature here, um, it may produce too many esters, too many phenols again. So it can clean all that up in the end. But after these one to six days, you have the maturation or the conditioning phase. And that can be as long as 10 to 12 days, actually. There's a rule of thumb. Uh, if, you, if you don't ra raise the temperature during uh, this phase, it will take double the time that the high growth phase took. So if you have high growth in like five days, you should let it condition uh, for 10 days. That's the rule of thumb and that works. Um, and this maturation or this conditioning phase is uh, where the yeast actually cleans up um, the beer. It cleans up uh, all the off flavors, uh, most of them anyway. Um, so it will actually clean up uh, acetaldehyde and uh, Deacetyl and, and stuff like that. If you let it, yeah, and that's really important. This because uh, if you underpitch, you can actually have a, a great fermentation by the looks of it. But when you come to this conditioning phase, there's not a lot a, enough healthy yeast to actually clean up the beer, and then you get stuck with uh, with a beer with too many off flavors in it, even though you it looked like you have a great fermentation and you hit your final gravity and everything was perfect. Um, but then when you get to the conditioning phase, there's just not enough yeast to, uh, to clean up well. Um, so that's why pitching the right amount of yeast, one package is rarely enough. Um, um, so that's why it's really important that you, that you pitch enough yeast. So there are three Three, uh, two to three ways to add yeast. If you're using liquid yeast, you can just uh, pitch it directly into your wort, or you can uh, make a starter. If you make a starter, it's actually cheaper uh, because you can use less yeast. The same thing with dry yeast, you can pitch directly into your wort, and that will work most of the time. But with higher OG beers, uh, yeah, it, it can be a problem, actually, because uh, the shock that the yeast will get um, can actually stress out the yeast and kill most of the yeast. Uh, and that's why it's recommended to uh, rehydrate your yeast if you have a higher OG beer, like 1065 or something like that. Uh, if you look in the description, I'll, I'll link to a video uh, on how to rehydrate your, your yeast. Um, and you can also make a starter with dry yeast if you want to. Okay, so controlling the temperature. Um, this is really, really important. If, if you have a too low a temperature, uh, the yeast will go dormant. It will actually go to sleep. Uh, and if the temperature is too high, it will be way too aggressive and you will have way too many uh, off flavors and esters and phenols in your beer. Um, just five, 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius above the, the range of the yeast, uh, the normal range of the yeast, can create some terrible off flavors in your beer. So, and that's why it's really important to either control your um, your temperature with a temperature con uh, with a fermentation chamber. Um, I'll link in the video how I built mine with an STC 1000, or you can use an Inkbird or something like that. Um, but if you can't control the temperature, you should use a yeast that can work in the temperature that you have in your home, and that could be a Quike or that could be a SO4. Uh, um, yeah. And the fuller strain, and 
that can it can handle pretty high temperature but but if you don't have the right environment at home you should build a fermentation chamber i really recommend that uh, for several reasons i'll get back to that right in a, in a moment um so if you want a clean beer you should pitch your yeast just below the ideal temperature of the yeast and ferment it in the lower range as well. Uh, like the Chico strain, uh, the California ale strain, that's a yeast that likes to be fermented at about uh, 20 to 23 degrees Celsius um, or equivalent to uh, 68 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want a clean beer with that yeast, you should pitch it at uh, 18 to 20 degrees, probably more like 18 degrees Celsius, and then just let it naturally uh, raise to 20 degrees. Or uh, in Fahrenheit, that's, that would be uh, 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So just pitch it just below the, the, the range of the, the lower range of the, of the temperature that the yeast can handle. Um, and then keep it there at the low range um, during the high growth uh, phase. That will produce less phenols, less esters, and less off flavors all in all. Um, but if you want a beer that has these fruity esters, um, then you should pitch it at a high temperature and you should let it ferment in the high growth phase um, at a higher temperature. Still within the range, never go outside the range, but, uh, but you can play with these numbers uh, depending on the beer you want. Um, yeah. So when is the high growth or high Krausen phase, when is that over? Um, that's when the airlock activity starts to go down, uh, the conditioning phase starts to start. <laughs> um, when you are about two to five specific gravity points from the final gravity, um, you could benefit from ramping up the temperature. Uh, if it's an ale, then just uh, what that, that's um, five degrees Celsius or eight to ten. Yeah, five degrees Celsius or seven degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you raise the temperature that much, you will shorten the conditioning phase. Um, or if it's an uh, if it's an uh, lager, you should raise the temperature eight to ten degrees Celsius or fourteen to eighteen degrees Fahrenheit. Um, simply just to let. Um, well, it's just uh, chemistry actually. Um, these reactions happen uh, quicker in, uh, in high temperature um, and the yeast works better at higher temperature when it's not producing alcohol and even sugar. So for cleaning up, you, it can benefit from a higher temperature. So you can actually ramp up the temperature there. Um, yeah, if you want to make sure that, you are, that this conditioning phase uh, is long enough. The rule of thumb is that you double the time that the high Krausen or the high growth phase took. So if you have uh, activity in your airlock for five days, if you leave the beer to condition for 10 days, you should be golden. So that's the rule of thumb. Um, and this is where it's really critical that you pitched enough yeast because um, the, the high growth phase, that actually wears out the yeast. So when you come to the conditioning phase, if you haven't pitched enough yeast to begin with, there won't be enough healthy yeast left to actually uh, clean up the beer. So uh, uh, yeah, and basically that's why it's really important to pitch enough yeast. One pack package is really enough, so I'm just saying. Um, and if there's not enough healthy yeast, you'll get stuck with all your flavors. So it's really important. I never rack my beer to secondary fermentation. 
Um, it's something they do in the commercial world uh, for other reasons. I won't go into that now. But for us homebrewers, it's only a risk of oxygenating your beer and a uh, risk of infection. So don't do it. There's no evidence that it makes better beer or clearer beer at all. Um, you can easily let your beer sit in your primary fermentation tank for five to six weeks. Autolysis is not a thing that we should concern ourselves about that much when we are homebrewers. In the commercial world, it's different. But for us homebrewers, it's not a problem leaving the beer for five to six weeks at all. So don't, be, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, basically that's what I wanted to tell you in this little guide about uh, fermentation. If you want to read more about this, uh, you can read it on my, on my website, beerstories.dk. Um, I can also recommend uh, John Palmer's book uh, on how to brew. It's a really great book. Uh, technical, but not too difficult to read. Um, everything I said here comes from, from this and yeah, some other uh, um, sources like uh, Fermentis and, yeah, and Lelleman and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess that was it. Um, if you have any questions, please, please write them in the comments or write to me elsewhere. I'll be very happy if you click like and subscribe to my channel and the video here. Uh, that would help me out a lot and you'll also get the news videos directly in your YouTube feed. But um, other than that, um, I think it's just, uh, yeah, have a happy brewing out there.